friends from a very windy Oakley, Kansas. There's the Joster. What originally was gonna be a three day drive, I realized we actually had four days, so we're turning it into a four day drive. And we're gonna make our way through Denver today and a little further than that even. The theme of our vlog today is Buffalo Bill Cody, but I knew we were coming out to see a statue in his birthplace. I didn't realize it was that freaking huge. So Buffalo Bill Cody is goes down in history as just a absolute icon. He had a traveling Wild West show where a lot of the um, imagery that we have of uh, old pioneer days and all that came from his shows. He would have Annie Oakley and Sitting Bull in this traveling show and he himself was known as just an amazing performer as well as having a history with the Pony Express and with the military and everything, buffalo hunting. Random stray dog coming up to say hi to me. Hello. Hi. Here's talking about how he got his name from the great buffalo hunt. And he always sported that long hair his entire life. I love it. <laughs> says it was the summer of 1868. Bill Cody had just successfully fulfilled a contract to provide meat for the Kansas and Pacific Railroad workers. By his own accounting, he had killed over 4,000 buffalo in just eight months. Cody also worked for the Army and was the favorite civilian scout and hunter for the cavalry station at Fort Hayes. This is fantastic. You can take the fun pick as Annie Oakley or Buffalo Bill, but look, if you go real close, they put his trademark mustache in there for you. Let's see if we can't get a photo in that. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> so it says Buffalo Bill was born in Iowa, but it was here in Logan County in the spring of 1868 while hunting buffalo for the crew building the Union Pacific Railroad that the legend of Buffalo Bill was born. Standing 16 feet and weighing 9,000 pounds, the twice life-size monumental bronze of Buffalo Bill on this horse Pursuit of Buffalo. Let's go see him. This is awesome. They've made a platform that you can actually walk all the way around it. Yeah, he was excellent at this. This was a way of feeding the military and the railroad workers. That was his famous gun, Lucretia Borgia. Look at the face. This thing is amazing. Man lived all over the place. <laughs> Has traveled everywhere, lived everywhere, had a real penchant for adventure. Now we're gonna hit the road, make our way to Denver. They also have a big museum there to him. This was a fun stop though. Some great information on him. And then it's showing where we are here and various connections he has to all these. And of course, promoting his Wild West show. Wild West experience anyway. This is when he partnered up towards the end with Pawnee Bill. He was responsible for a big part of Annie Oakley's career, promoting her and she traveled with his shows for years. She loved working with Buffalo Bill. There was her tent while relaxing during the shows. Chicago World's Fair in 1893 with Buffalo Bill. Not hard to believe that this town would be named after Annie Oakley because Cody, Wyoming was named after Buffalo Bill Cody. Hey John, it's our first time in Colorado for both of us. Yeah, I've never gotten to come to Colorado before. Wow, the roads got significantly worse once we entered Colorado. Denver. 
So now we're technically heading up to Lookout Mountain. We're going to come back through Denver in probably a month. We're kind of in a time crunch today, so we can only do a little bit. There's the sign for it, Buffalo Bill's Grave and Museum. So when he died, he actually had in his will that he wanted to be buried on Memorial Day. And so he actually had 10,000 mourners come up here for his grave and funeral. All right, we found it. So down here they have the museum. Over here they have a little cafe restaurant. And his grave is right around there up the hill. Stay off the buffalo. This is a stone that says in memory of Johnny Baker, foster son of Buffalo Hill. Yeah, very, very close, very close. Used to perform together. Look, they got some snow. He died here in Denver at his sister's house, but he wasn't living here at the time. A little further. Right there. Pretty nice spot up here. He was buried up here in 1917, then his wife died in 1921. William Frederick Cody, Buffalo Bill. You can see it says. Then Louisa Maud Cody. And then if you look over here on the little gold piece, you can see his name. So he's in this section right here. And she is right beside him. They had a pretty tumultuous, crazy marriage, actually. <laughs> because he was considered, in his day, he was the most famous man in the world. And he was a big fan of the ladies, big fan of smoking and drinking. And one point, he asked her for a divorce. And she got pretty public about it and exposed what he was really like. And then when it went in front of a judge... The judge denied his request and made him remain married to her. She just said, hey, we married for better or worse, richer or for poorer, and I meant it. So they were together till the end. And over here, there's uh, another little plaque because he was a master mason. Very, very top level. So here it says, why is Buffalo Bill buried here? There's an ongoing debate regarding Buffalo Bill Cody's burial site. His last will and testament specified a burial site near Cody, Wyoming. He later removed that request. In 1917, as he lay dying in his sister's home in Denver, he recalled the beautiful view from Lookout Mountain and asked his wife, Louisa, to bury him there. Then it says, Buffalo Bill, change of heart, surprised people in Cody and began a controversy that continues till today. The disagreement generated threats to steal his body and false claims that he's actually buried in Wyoming. Today, several tons of concrete ensure that he stays exactly where he's buried. Because remember that stone we saw for Johnny Baker? Johnny Baker had him encased in concrete to make sure nobody could move him. And that is the bugle that played taps for his funeral that is in the museum. Take a look from this side. You have even more. In memoriam, Colonel William Frederick Cody Buffalo Bill, noted scout and Indian fighter, born February 26, 1846, Scott County, Iowa. Died January 10th, 1917, Denver, Colorado. Now you gotta remember, I know it's totally not PC 
for that to be on there but in his day that was his job his job from the government was to go out and fight the Native Americans so he would actually say throughout his life hey like they deserve rights too and they should have their rights but his job at different times was to enforce the opposite and there's a little thing up here that says frequently asked questions is buffalo bill really buried here yes on the day of his burial cody's casket was open for one final viewing by his family close friends and many of the twenty thousand others who attended the services huh i thought it was 10. It says any anyone saying the stories of him being buried anywhere else are simply false then you see on there that some things say GAR, Grand Army of the Repu Grand Army of the Republic. His mother begged him not to get involved in the Civil War, but he joined the Union anyway. Then it says, "Why do people throw money in here?" 1923, a group of Lakota Sioux, led by Spotted Weasel, former performer with Buffalo Bills, Wild West, visited the grave. They put Indian head nickels on the grave to honor Buffalo Bill. The image on the nickel was that of Iron Tail, a longtime friend of Cody and a performer in the Wild West. So the tradition of putting money on the grave has continued ever since. So here lies the most famous man in the world at one time. Performer second to none, they say. Could tell a tale, spin a yarn capture everyone's imagination now I do want to go down and check out the museum let's take a view from over there they have a little view spot we can see the view he would have talked about loving up here I know people change their minds in their last days but it does seem weird to plan on being buried somewhere especially the, where the town was named after you and you lived then change your mind at the end but who knows so here it says who is Buffalo Bill he rode the Pony Express, fought in the Civil War, hunted buffalo to feed railroad workers, and scouted for the army. His show, Buffalo Bill's Wild West, was based on these experiences in the American West. His legend of the West. Awarded the Medal of Honor by Congress in 1872, began every performance of Buffalo Bill's Wild West with the Star Spangled Banner long before it was the national anthem. Advocated for American Indians and we women's equal rights visited over 14 countries and 1400 cities in 30 years employed performers from every inhabited continent and called for preservation of the buffalo and other wild animals places like the Grand Canyon so like basically everything he made his living doing at one point he ended up being against later on and here's a view spot from where he's buried you can see the whole town and everything You can see like the football stadium down there. Oh. Now let's check out the museum. They even made a movie about him. Cecil B. DeMille was a big fan and he even starred in movies sometimes instead of doing his own show. Look at all the people coming to see the show. Annie Oakley performed with him for, I believe, 17 years. Says William Cody was the kindest, simplest, most loyal man I ever knew. He was the staunchest friend. He was, in fact, the personification of those sturdy and lovable qualities that really made the West. Wow, look at all the memorabilia. Guns, clothing, wardrobe. That's a bench that he bought in Italy. It was actually bought for him by Johnny Baker. And this says, this is Goldie Griffith's show trunk. She was a trick rider. She joined the Wild West show when she was 20. She later married another rider with the show during a performance at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and she continued to perform with the show from 1913 to 1922. 
Here's one of the horse saddles from one of the performers in the Bill Show. As well as this one, used in 1911 for Buffalo Bill's Wild West Show. There's a real buffalo head hanging there, and that was the last buffalo that he killed in 1884. 1915, he presented the mounted head to a friend, and then the friend gave it to the museum in 1921. There's Buffalo Bill Cody's Bowie knife, one of several that he owned and used. He used it for both hunting and as a weapon. And then above it is a cane, Shiloh cane carved from a confederate flag staff had been captured at the Battle of Shiloh and was presented to Cody by the Women's Relief Corps in 1883. Oh yeah, I can see that now. Now this is supposedly the gun that he used, his Colt Dragoon revolver while he rode the Pony Express. Some say he never actually rode it, but who knows. He claimed that he did and always claimed in his show he was the most famous rider. Pony Express didn't last long, but it was because of the telegraph. So in the first few months, some writers carried one or two Colt Dragoon revolvers. Over time, these were abandoned in favor of a single and lighter Colt Navy revolver. And the horn says it's from Johnny Baker's collection. It was made to resemble the horns that the Pony Express writers blew to announce their arrival at stations. It was etched with images of Buffalo Bill, the Indians, and was built to commemorate Buffalo Bill's time on the Pony Express. It was a gift for him. There's a painting that says the Scout Bill Cody at the bottom. He would scout for the infantry. Here were some of his war medals. He was actually given the Congressional Medal of Honor. And then years later, like, I think it was like in the 80s or 90s, I forget when it was, they, they stripped him of it and said that his qualifications that he met when he was given this, he wouldn't, like, he didn't meet the qualifications for it now. So his family fought to get the medals restored. That's the Indian War Medal next to it. The longer one was the Congressional Medal of Honor. That giant gun there. This is a 50 caliber model 1866 Springfield. Could be the twin sister to Lucretia Borgia, Buffalo Bill's best known buffalo hunting rifle. Huh. According to Johnny Baker, Cody also used this rifle during his buffalo hunting days. Here's one of Buffalo Bill's scripts. Performed between 1882 and 1884. One of the few left in existence. And they used to sell dime novels by telling stories about people like Buffalo Bill and putting pictures of them doing things on the cover. So this was one of the 15 dime novels written by Buffalo Bill in the 1870s. Probably the last dime novel written by him also. Since he was the most famous man of the world at one time, why not write your own book? This was his autobiography, The Life of Honorable William F. Cody, known as Buffalo Bill, the famous hunter, scout, and guide, appeared in 1879. That says that is his boar's tooth cane. Belonged to Buffalo Bill is one of the several canes he used with formal attire. And then speaking of, here is one of his tuxedos right there, or what he would have worn for formal attire, tailed coat. This dress jacket was made for him in Chicago, 1901. And there he is wearing one. Now that's really cool, that's Johnny Baker's gun. It says young Johnny Baker learned about the show business and shooting from Buffalo Bill. By 1885, he was featured marksman with the Wild West. This 12 gauge model, 1897 shotgun was used by Baker in the show. Here was one of his Wild West programs from 1885. An amazing. This was the year that Annie Oakley joined the show. Sweet. Sitting Bull also appeared in the show for four months. And then over here they have Sitting Bull's Peace Pipe. That's awesome. According to Johnny Baker's records, 
the museum the piece might belong to Sitting Bull. That's amazing. And then I guess that would have been the, the bottom part. You would have screwed this piece into the end of that piece. And that would have all made one pipe. And there's Buffalo Pill and Sitting Bull right there together. Joined the Wild West Show in 1885. Unlike other Indian performers, he didn't appear in reenactments of the battles. He was presented as the great leader of the Lakota. He would ride slowly in a dignified manner around the arena. Right here you can hear his voice. Let's listen to what he sounds like talking. Ladies and gentlemen, let me to introduce to you a congress of the Rough Riders of the World. That is Short Bull's Duclaw necklace, and it says that it belonged to Ghost Dance leader Short Bull. After Wounded Knee, he joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West. He later presented the necklace to Johnny Baker, founder of this museum. This is interesting. These are hand-painted lamps that he presented to his daughters in 1890. cool is that? Him on one part of the lamp. I assume Sitting Bull right there. That is really cool. That is an invitation to him for tea with Oscar Wilde. You can see where it says up in the corner Colonel Cody. It says Mr. and Mrs. Wilde. Mr. and Mrs. Oscar Wilde. That's a full size buffalo. Says the herd that was owned by his show was the fourth largest herd in the United States. Here he made a gun bit. Look at that, you can see it's like a gun split in half. All the parts right there. It's a gift given to him before his death. Over here is a painting by Remington, Frederick Remington. And then this was a band uniform with Bill's image right there. So his newly wealthy Bill returned to the North Platte after the 1893 Chicago explosion. He was welcomed by the town citizens with a brass band. Noticing that the band had no uniforms, Cody promptly purchased every band member a uniform, each featuring a button of himself on the front. <laughs> God, that's kind of morbid. I don't really like that. It says it's an umbrella handle made from Duke's leg. Duke was presented to Buffalo Bill by his friend, General Nelson Mill Miles. The 1890s became one of Cody's favorite horses. This umbrella handle with the likeness of a buffalo was carved from Duke's leg bone after his death. You couldn't find a better thing to carve it out of than his dead leg bone? It is good work though. There's his 32 level Mason certificate. Letter from Buffalo Bill to Johnny Baker. His farewell march, Buffalo Bill's farewell march. Now this was Buffalo Bill's last show outfit. The hat was worn by him at his last public appearance on November 11th, 1916, just two months before his death. And then it says the saddle and tack here, the one of, it was one of Buffalo Bill's favorites. His favorite saddle. Oh yeah, that, that's great. I can see why I liked it. And then here we basically have his office. Portable desk and camp chair formed the office from which Buffalo Bill tried to organize a new show during the time with Sells Floto Circus. The T on the back of his chair reminded him of the ranch near Cody. Then we saw where he's buried up there. Well, actually here. That's part of the procession right there. Actually covered his casket with American flag is very patriotic and a uh, veteran. Then here they are. Up at the hill. Here we have 
Buffalo Bill's jacket and pants that he wore at the shows in the 1890s. Kind of like a precursor to the nudie suit in a way. Because <laughs> there's stuff all up the sides you can see. Also another one of his favorite saddles from 1897. Now this whole wall is dedicated to his funeral. First thing I noticed, down here when he passed away, they took a casting of his hand and he used to do this really weird, I'll see if I can find it online somewhere, this weird handshake with everybody. So it's kind of funny that they would save his hand. And then right over here is the what taps was played on the bugle that taps was played on, like I mentioned outside. And then up at the gravesite. And this is a clay pigeon shooter. It says that Buffalo Bill advocated for clay pigeons instead of birds. Here is Short Bull's head dress. Mentioned a little bit ago that Short Bull came and worked for him. It was the lake here of the ghost dance, remember that? This was the headdress that Short Bull would wear. It says, although it was a peaceful movement, the ghost dance led to a conflict between the Lakota and the U.S. Army. The movement ended with a massacre at Wounded Knee, South Dakota, and imprisoned much of its leaders. Within months, Buffalo Bill got Short Bull and other ghost dancers released. And this was Short Bull's coat. And hide painting. As you can see, there's all kinds of art all over it. It says Short Bull's coat is a war recording illustrating a battle between Lakota and another tribe. This headdress belonged to Sitting Bull. Wow. Elk tooth headdress. That's amazing. He was part of that wounded knee. And these are his moccasins also. It's amazing that his memorabilia was saved by Johnny Baker. And there's a picture. Sitting Bull and Buffalo Bill. And here's the big Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey circus poster featuring him right in the dead center. Wow, what a guy. And this painting even has him wearing that last jacket and has the horse wearing the last bridle and everything that we saw. I showed you that Buffalo Bill was buried with his wife. There's his wife. Killer stained glass too. Maybe we'll get a Buffalo burger here. Buffalo Bill's grill. Oh yeah, is that part of the experience also? Rowdy root beer. I got this awesome magnet with Kenny Oakley, Buffalo Bill, and Sitting Bull. And as promised, the famous root beer float, which is flowing over the top, and a Buffalo burger. It's overflowing because you gotta drink it once they put the ice cream in. All right, we got our burger. I'm excited. We probably shouldn't be eating buffalo, right? But <laughs> but God, it's so good. Mm. Well, this was an awesome stop. Got to pay my respects to Buffalo Bill and Cody. Got to see a lot of cool memorabilia, and got to have a buffalo burger. I'd say this was a win. We gotta hit the road though. We have a couple more hours of driving to do today. Came back out, this guy was sitting in the shade, happy as a clam. 
It's really unfortunate I only got to spend a little amount of time in Denver since it was my first time here, my first time in Colorado ever. But like I said, we'll be coming back through. It's just that I have to get to Vegas by a certain day. Something I'm vlogging with someone else and I only have one day to do it. So I'd rather hit Denver on our way back. And sorry about the windshield. No matter how many times I clean it, it just gets filthy again right away from all the bugs. jaw you're not gonna see it too long we're pretty much driving through Frisco Colorado right now scenery on this drive right now like a freaking car commercial into the rocks my friends we're gonna call it a day thank you all for watching from parachute colorado we will see you next time goodbye